Are you interested in learning how to make money in nano stocks? Follow Uptick Newswire in our new multi-part video series as we explore the most common mistakes made by investors. In this series, Everett Jolly will provide an outline and share details on how to avoid these pitfalls and produce winning results, displaying how to make money in nano stocks. Hi, I'm Everett Jolly. I'm with Uptick Newswire and founder of the company. As you know, I put out a series, or I'm going to put out a series, about the OTC markets. And the first thing we talked about is knowledge. And I want you to get knowledge if you're going to be a penny stock winner. First of all, let me introduce you into the OTC markets. The OTC markets were started in 1913 in New York City. And it wasn't until around uh, 1999 that there was actually a quotation service. So what I'm trying to say is 1913 to 1999 there was no internet that you could go on and look for the bid and ask. People would receive a, a pink sheet and on they would buy it or sell it at the bid and ask on that pink sheet. In 1999 we went to the what was called the National Quotation uh, Bureau and there you could look at the bid and ask on a quotation vice. The first, the first part of OTC markets I want to talk about is the pink sheets. The OTC markets is made up of 10,000 stocks, and honestly, about 8,000 of them are worthless. The first 8,000 is made up of the OTC pink sheets, which they have no requirements. That means that you being a publicly traded company, you could fictitiously put any kind of amount of revenues on there you wanted to, even though they weren't true. They also have uh, no requirements. You don't have to post. You don't, really don't have to do nothing basically it's the wild wild west. Then the next level is made up of the OTCQB and that is made up of a little bit more stringent requirements and those requirements are one your stock must be above one cent, two uh, you must have audit financials. Now what's the difference between audit financials and unaudit financials? Well it's anywhere from thirty thousand to a hundred thousand dollars a year. That's why most of the companies on the pink sheets won't pay a firm, a CPA firm that's registered with the SEC, they won't pay them $30,000 or $100,000 to come in and do their audit financials. And so they can just put up any numbers they want to. But the OTCQB, they must have audit financials. And so you got to put a little bit more weight into that and a more uh, legal uh, stringency and say, hey, these guys are, are kind of the real deal. From there, we go to the OTCQX. Most of the companies that are on the OTCQX will eventually move up to the NASDAQ. And there's a little bit more stringent on there. First of all, they have to have everything uh, sponsored by a, uh, a financial institution or investment bank. They must have a, a lawyer uh, sponsor them. Uh, they must make uh, all their uh, requirements to the SEC, to FINRA. It's a lot more stringent. On these, there's 10,000 companies. 400 is made up of the OTCQX. Around 2,000 is made up of the OTCQB and the 8,000 is on the pink sheet. Now that I have introduced you to the OTC market, I wanted to make one statement going forward. In all these series that I'm doing, I'm not getting any money from any companies. Uh, I'm not getting any kickback. So if I throw out a, a, a site, or an agency or anything like that, it's because I believe in that agency or I believe in that particular website. That being said, let's go forward. Let's talk about the three agencies uh, that are compromised, if you will, around the OTC markets and around the stock market itself. Egger, FINRA, and the SEC. Now, Egger, they give you what's called a risk score. So if you're looking at a stock, especially a penny stock, anything that's valued under $5, uh, they can give you what's called a value score to see if they're on time uh, with their requirements, to see if they post their 8Ks or 10Qs. You might want to check in that. Egger has a additional responsibility, if you will, to you, the consumer, the investor. Is Their job is to look at the OTC on a daily uh, on a on a day to day basis to see if everything is right, see if everything is wrong, and if you have any complaints, you the consumer, you the investor, should be calling up FINRA and taking all your complaints to them. And last but not least is the SEC, Security Exchange Commission, and basically what they're for, they're like the FBI of all securities. If something has gone wrong, it's usually uh, a civil. Uh, crime that's brought, not a, a criminal a crime. So you might want to check into the SEC.
Also, I wanted to bring you up to speed that a lot has happened since I told you since 1913 that the OTC markets have come up. We're looking at an industry that's been around now for 106 years. And, and recently, uh, back in 1997, I believe, uh, a gentleman by the name of Cromwell Clausen, he actually bought the OTC markets. He's a publicly traded company. Uh, he's currently doing about $54 million in revenue with a net uh, of 12.6 net net. Now that being said, he puts a lot of different signs up there, a stop sign, uh, skull and, and uh, uh, you know, crossbones. Put a little bit of value to that because the reason why I say that is that he charges the people that are on the OTC market, he charges them $10,000 a year to be on his exchange. And if they don't report everything that he feels that they should be report on, he puts up a stop sign, a yield sign, crossbone sign. So uh, put a little bit into that, but don't put a lot into that. That being said, I wanted to go to what makes the markets drive. How do people find out about uh, penny stocks? Well, there's a couple ways. First of all, there's made up of uh, dealers and brokers. And out of these dealers and brokers, there's about 80 market makers made up. And so when they see the news come out on the OTC markets, the news, the press releases, they take that and say, well, you know what? This is going to be a very hot stock. They put a bid in there. They, they, they make a market make. You know, So if there's not a market made for a stock, there's chaos in the market. So remember, there's always a market maker, market maker, and it's always made by the, the the quotation bureau of there a bid and the ask. So if if you want to sell something, it's at one price. You want to buy it, it's at a different price. And so brokers and dealers are made up, and you can find those on the OTC markets. If you have any questions, go to the OTC markets, look up brokers and dealers, maybe call them, see who's making a market on that particular stock. In closing, some of this might be fundamental to you, some of it might be new to you, but uh, I wanted to just give you a, a recap of the OTC markets. That's where I make my money at. Even though you could buy stocks that are $5 on the New York Stock Exchange or the NASDAQ, I concentrate purely on the OTC markets. My next segment is about liquidity. When should you buy a stock? When should you sell a stock? What to look for? And I'm going to give you my playbook in the next segment. This program is entirely sponsored and produced by Uptick Newswire, LLC, which is responsible for the content. The opinions and information provided on this program are for educational and research purposes only. Uptick Newswire encourages all listeners of this program to do their due diligence and research when determining investment strategies that will work for them, or to seek the assistance of an investment professional.